Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. This is just going to be a quick walkthrough of how I wired my dash cam in the, my Mach-E. Uh, unfortunately, I s forgot to start recording before I started putting things back together again, so you're just going to have to... I'm going to talk you through some things because I don't want to have to tear it apart again because my hands are freezing because it's about 16 degrees outside. So let's flip the camera around, and I'm just going to quickly show you how I did this. It will be slightly different for different dash cams. The hard wiring kit I use for this camera is a little bit wonky in that it requires two fuse taps instead of just one. I've never used one like this before, but I'm gonna show you that right now. So right here, had to, this is one of the fuse taps. This is for the ACC, the accessory power tap, and then this is the main tap. Basically, this kit requires that you have, in order for it to work right for parking mode, it requires that you have one lead that turns off, that's switched when the car turns off, and then another one which is constant for parking mode. I've never used, like I mentioned, I've never used one like this before. I've only ever either done it all off of accessory, so it's like just turns on and off with the car, or it's just constant and then you use something like this, which is a voltage detector, which is what this thing also has, because it'll turn itself off. You can use this switch to control how much voltage, what the minimum voltage is for the 12 volt battery before this thing turns itself off. I usually use the highest setting because I'm paranoid like that, but you can do whatever you need to do there. Uh, you will need a ground, and this is the part that I forgot to show. So I'm gonna back up here a second. You do need to find some place to ground your kit to the body. In this car, in the Mach-E, it's actually behind here. Uh, it wasn't that hard to get this off, but it's really cold, and so uh, taking these things off in the cold is kind of risky, but I was uh, feeling adventurous in that way today. So I just ran it that wire up through here. There's a beam here with a hole in it, so I just used a, I used a bolt with two nuts to kind of hold, to create a mount point for the ground. And using a pry tool, which you'll definitely want to have, I just kind of pulled the, uh, the, this stripping away just a little bit so that I could get the, the wire that runs up here into that space, into this space. And you don't need to pull that much, just a little bit, so you can just feed the wire behind here. Now one wire for the, the rear is just going to keep going and I can actually touch the wire here with my finger. You don't want to put it too far in here because in some in a lot of cars there's airbags in this in a lot of cars there's airbags in these spaces. So you do want need to be really careful. Some people take the whole car apart to do this. Um, that's probably better, but you don't need to as long as you're not pushing it into any of these big voids. If you're just kind of leaving it very along these edges here. And so the wire that goes to the front, goes to the front dash cam, uh, goes up here, goes up here at the, in this crease in the A-pillar, and then just tucked inside here. Like I can still touch these with my finger, both the, the rear and the front. Then the front one, I ran up in here, and it, had a, it has a ferrite core on it for interference. So I just kind of pulled this down enough to stick the ferrite core inside of this void and then brought it back down there to plug in there. The rear follows the same path out here and then just tucked inside here a little bit and then again just pull the stripping away enough that you can just kind of follow this space. And then once it's in there and you just kind of push the stripping, you just kind of push rub the stripping and it, you don't even notice that it's there. And just follow the pathway the whole way to the back. Here, same deal. Just come out enough a little bit and then just kind of push it into this space here. Follow to the back. Getting the camera here was the most complicated part of it. Not because any of this stuff is hard, because here, again, they just kind of push it up here, and then when you get up to the stripping, you just kind of hold in the stripping, is that when you get to here where this boot is, 
getting it to the boot was a little bit complicated because or getting it through the boot I should say was a little bit complicated because the boot is really narrow and this camera uses a micro USB connector so the connector is probably about 40 percent of the size of this so it just took a lot of work to work a lot of effort to work it through that um, I did just disconnect pull this off and pull this off during to make that happen but otherwise and I just kind of pulled this down enough to get my hand in there to push the wire up to the space here and then just worried it through and then I just tucked all the extra uh, slack in the cable kind of coiled it up with a um, zip tie and just stuck it in here and then of course once you get here I didn't even have to remove this panel I just kind of reached in there and fished it out and then brought it out and stuck it on there so it all in it probably took me <laughs> much longer than it should have because it's so cold and I kept having to go inside to warm my hands up because you can't I can't wear gloves when I'm doing this but it wasn't complicated it was uh, one of the more straightforward ones that I've done except for this boot and the how difficult it is to get the fuse panel sorry there's a truck coming by how difficult it is to get the fuse panel off in a uh, in a Maki -E. just ridiculous anyway I hope you thought that was useful if you did go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have any questions or comments leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can thanks